What is going on everybody? Welcome to another Python with Pandas sentiment analysis and finance tutorial video series. What we well, what we did in the last video is we worked on how to make dynamic moving averages and now in this video what I want us to do is actually take those dynamic moving averages that we generate and we want to kind of append this to our data frame so later we can reference that, reference what those values are and make a judgment whether or not we should make a, an investment or not. Okay. So we're going to take our first step towards doing that. Also, uh, after we get done with that, the other thing I'd like us to do is do some housekeeping here. As we can see already it, for these counts, right, we've just hard-coded these counts in there. That's kind of silly. We really shouldn't do that. We should, first of all, just have one variable that is that determines what those count you know, divisions are. And also, we might as well just put that as a parameter in our function here. And then we might as well set those as default parameters with 275, 110, 55. So we don't have to type them at all. But if we wanted to change them, it would only require one edit to change. Because this gets messy really quick and it's poor, poor programming in general to do something like this. So we'll fix that right away. Um, that way this problem doesn't get any bigger. So anyway, uh, that's what we're going to do here. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is once we've got MA1234, the first thing that we need to consider is, well, we're going to add this to our data frame, but we also want to ignore any plots that don't have data for MA4, since that's our largest moving average. So for example, when it's 100, 250, 500, 5,000, anything from plot you know, 1 to uh, 5,000 is going to have a skewed um, value for what the 5,000 moving average is, right? So there's going to be no value in this case um, because there's not enough data. So it's going to you know, save in our data as not a number or it would just be blank. Either way, we're not able to evaluate whether or not something is higher than a 5,000 moving average if there is no answer to a 5,000 moving average. So that's the first thing we want to do. If you followed any of my other tutorials, usually what we do to denote this is SP, so capital S, capital P, and that just stands for starting point. So it's how we derive the starting point of our data that we want to consider. And so the starting point is going to be integer valuation of count divided by 5.5. Um, okay. Now the problem here is it might make a decimal. And we can't, so what we're going to end up doing is we're going to take that NumPy array, because it, or at least the data frame reference, and it kind of translates to a NumPy array. We're going to take that NumPy array and we want to say colon, or we want to say basically 5,000 colon, so from number 5,000 on. But we can't say, you know, number 5,000.25, right? You can't have that be a decimal. So we need to convert this decimal to a whole number. And you could use round and zero, but the problem with that is it might round down and it would just, you know, be slightly inaccurate. So let's go ahead and fix that. And instead, um, instead of just the integer of count five, um, count divided by 5.5, what we can use is math.seal. And basically that is short for ceiling. And what it's going to do is it's going to take any decimal and round it up okay, to the nearest whole number. So even a 5.1 rounds up to 6. And in this way, maybe we lose one row of data, but at least we won't be one row of data too early. So that's just the best way to do it in my opinion. So anyway, um, we're going to call that ceiling. Now, the next thing that we want to do is actually we're going to define these new columns that we want to generate. So, for example, this is going to be df ma1, and that's going to be equal to ma1. Okay, that defines that new column for us. Now, let's just go ahead and highlight this, copy, and then paste, paste, paste. And now we just need to change this to 2, 3, 4, and again 2, 3, and 4. Now we have defined these as columns in our data frame. We could save to CSV, but we can also continue doing other mathematical operations by referencing this column. So that's why we actually want to end up doing that. Now, once we've done that, we've added these columns. Now we want to chop off all of the bad data, right? I.e. the data before MA4, whatever number that is. So with Apple, that would be the first 50,000 lines of data that we want to just chop off. So for this, what we're going to say is df equals, so data frame, equals the current data frame, and then sp colon. So the current data frame from the starting point on. Okay, makes a whole lot of sense. So that's all we want to do. Now we still want to plot the same stuff, and everything else should be good. So let's go ahead and save and run that. Uh, hopefully we don't get any errors from typos and the like. 
Now while that is running, the next thing I suggest we are going to do, uh, since this might take a little bit to process, is we want to edit this um, right here and we want to add those default parameters that we were discussing. So we want stock name and we did, we got a uh, error, math is not defined, we did not import math. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Import math, hopefully that would be enough because we did just all of the only other module we used here was math.seal, right? No. Okay, yeah. So anyways, hopefully that doesn't hit us again with another error. Anyways, so in single stock auto MA, stock name, um, that's fine. Then we want a default parameter of div1. What is div1 going to equal? Um, and then and so on. So div1 will equal 275. And then we'll say div2 equals, okay, our chart is up. So let me finish writing this out, but the chart came up. So div2 equals 110. And now let's pull this chart over. Um, what do we do? I guess we did Apple? What stock is this? I can't even remember what stock we're... Oh, no, okay. This is Google. <laughs> uh, okay, so here's Google. Move this over a little bit. Okay, so um, so we got our, uh, our plotting. Uh, everything looks good. And if we hit home, it looks to me like we still have that improper starting point here. So let me go back and look at this. DF equals SP colon, possibly we're plotting, right. Okay, so the other thing that we have to edit here is see MA1 is referencing back to this MA1 up here. And that's a problem because actually we want to reference that column now. So instead, what we're going to do is we'll just take this, copy, and we're going to do, and actually, actually, let's take the whole thing, DF, copy, and then click on this, paste, and then paste, paste, paste. And then we'll say two, three, and four. And then we make sure I close that plot. I did not. So close that plot. Let's go ahead and rerun it. Now, while that is processing, we'll come back up here and we're going to continue making our updates. Um, so we're going to say div two equals um, 110, div three equals 55, and finally div four equals 5.5. So these are just the default parameters that we want on this function. Now, once we've done that, we want to come down here and we want to change all of these, right? So this would be, instead of 275, it'll be div 1. Okay, now let's come back over to our chart because it came up. Let me get up here. And so now you can see that this chart, whoops, this chart is um, more, more what we're hoping for, right? Where the starting, they all, all the moving averages start at the exact same moment. That way, we're always working with what I would say valid data, right? Okay, so we, we actually have that here and we're happy with that. Um, so uh, that's good, so let's close out of this and let's continue working with what we need to do for this housekeeping so we don't have to continue hard coding stuff. So instead of div one, and then I'm just gonna copy that, paste, paste, and paste. So div two, div three, and div four. So those are just corresponding to the default parameters in our function here, and we've got those all set. Um, as we come down, the starting point, okay, don't forget this one, we've got a 5.5, that needs to be converted to a div 4. Um, and then we come down here, do we have any others? Okay, right, so here we've got what needs to be, um, see if I still have that paste, yeah, paste, 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 and paste. That needs to be a div 4, div 1, this is a div 2, and this is a div 3. Now, just as an aside, if you wanted to ever have these other ones be a decimal, don't forget you would need to fix this, right? Otherwise, you're going to have a really long decimal there um, that would get in the way. Now, this is only for visualization purposes, so if you don't mind having a really long decimal in the legend or you can just not show the legend, that doesn't really matter because all we're doing here is just trying to visualize the data so that we can formulate a strategy um, on the data, but otherwise it doesn't really matter what well, hang on, how big that um, that number, or how long that decimal is, rather. So at this point, I believe we have taken out all of that, all those hard coded numbers. Uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and run this one more time and make sure that that is, you know, we're getting the information that we want. Um, yeah, that looks good. So. Whenever this comes up, hopefully we'll have used our dynamic numbers. And then when you come down here and you call you know, what you want to plot, 
you could then fill these these parameters with other numbers if you wanted but you don't well, obviously we're not going to do that right now but then later on too we could create a function that calls these um, that fills in those parameters for us so like I was saying before if we wanted to maybe search for a company um, the company's best div numbers we could create a function that would do that very easily with this function to test but anyway more on that later if we go to that but I'm I'm hoping that we won't um, have to go into something like that but anyways um, so that worked out good so we're plotting on the dynamic uh, moving averages we're using our default parameters now instead of hard coding and we've got a starting point now um, and so not only is that is all of this useful for data visualization but also for data manipulation so generally visualization is really there to help you the programmer see that everything is working the way that you intend it to work otherwise I mean the computer doesn't need to you know you don't have to have any visualization for the computer it doesn't need it so anyway that's mostly for us but the starting point we need that and then we also want these dynamic moving averages to not be so hard coded like they were so that's going to conclude this tutorial video. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the section below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.